Hello. In this presentation, we will explore how differentiated instruction and technology work together. High quality differentiation is always about objectives and standards. In other words, what will students be able to do at the end of the activities that are planned for them? Tomlinson wrote that if the basic assignment itself is far too easy for an advanced learner, having a chance to answer a complex question is not an adequate challenge. If the information is essential for a struggling learner, allowing him to skip a test question because he never understood the information is equally ineffective. Simply micro-differentiating or tailoring the same suit of clothes is not the same thing as high-quality differentiation. High-quality differentiation is also a factor of assessment. It means teachers must know where their students are and how to move them forward. Assessment includes the initial assessments such as Reading and interest inventories and surveys given at the beginning of the year or at midpoints includes the large-scale evaluative tools that are a part of every teacher's and student's lives. However, it also includes the ongoing assessment as students move from one course of study to another course of study, from one unit to another, and from one lesson to another. The ultimate goal is that learners will be able to accept responsibility for their own learning as a result of the feedback that they were provided and as a result of the learning activities that were differentiated with their own needs in mind. High quality assessment may be thought of as a math problem. Assessment information combined with objectives and standards multiplied by respectful tasks aligned with those standards tends to equal student growth. Respectful tasks are those that challenge students without speaking down to them and that push them forward. Differentiation always includes planning. Planning is the key to effective differentiated instruction. The, the instruction may be high preparation or it may be a low preparation task on the part of the teacher, but always planning is the key related to objectives and standards and relative to students' needs. Curricular choices and task choices are important parts of differentiated instruction, but not every choice leads to a curricular goal or to achievement of standards and objectives for the lesson. Choices might simply lead to tailoring an old suit of clothes, or they might lead to an entire different way of thinking about how students might achieve curricular outcomes and standards. Digital technologies offer teachers and students opportunities that didn't exist five years ago, 10 years ago, or 20 years ago. However, how teachers choose to use the technologies available is critically important for differentiated instruction. Sometimes it is the difference between offering students the opportunity to use crayons or colored pencils. That is, there really isn't a big difference in terms of how students begin to understand a science concept just because they use one tool or the other. With digital technologies, students might choose to use Prezi or they might choose to use PowerPoint, but that's only important for differentiation if the choice of tool leads to a better understanding of the concept. It may help to think of differentiated tasks in terms of this matrix. We can think about students' readiness to learn, their interests, and their learning profiles as compared with the products of learning tasks, processes of learning tasks, content of learning tasks, and sometimes affect and the learning environment itself. Here I present three examples. Differentiation can occur throughout different phases of any lesson design. Here we will use the Hunter lesson design and we will focus on the anticipatory set, instructional input, and independent practice phases of the lesson. In a lesson designed to help students know how bones and muscles work together to provide a structural framework for movement and also for them to know the names of major muscle groups and how they function, this anticipatory set helps build on background knowledge. 
Three activities are provided and the teacher may either assign students to groups or the students may choose groups based on their own knowledge of their own learning profiles. Three activities are provided. All of the links will be provided at the end of this presentation. For activity number one, students will engage in a muscle game with a group orientation toward independent work, a cognitive style that deals with parts to whole, and an intelligence preference for the spatial and visual. In activity number two, students will engage in an interactive Know, Want to Know, and Learn chart, or KWL. They will group and categorize muscles based on their prior knowledge. Their group orientation is toward the group work, their cognitive style is creative, and the intelligence preference is interpersonal and analytic. In the final activity, students will overview by reading and their group orientation will be either group or individual depending on their preference or the assignment by the teacher. Cognitive style is to establish an essence for the understanding of muscles and how they work together and a linear progression. Intelligence preference is verbal and linguistic. During instructional input and to complement other instructional inputs that would help students understand the relationships of bones and muscles to movement, I use the twerty.com website to find three additional websites that would address students' ability to learn as relative to what they already know. I categorize these as I know quite a bit about muscles and want to learn specifics, uh, second, I know some things about muscles but need to learn more about how muscles and bones work together. And finally, I need to learn some basics about muscles. And in this example, there is also a graphic novel component that pairs linguistic and non-linguistic information in order to enhance understanding. As independent practice, students can choose from three different tasks that were designed to address the notion of how bones and muscles work together to produce movement. In the first, students will draw the muscles from one muscle group on paper. They will label each of the muscles and then scan or photograph those drawings and upload them to the class wiki. In the second independent practice task, students may choose to identify two or three diseases of the muscles and then locate a reliable website, evaluate that website, and create a Venn diagram using an interactive tool on classtools.net to categorize those diseases. They would then share that URL with the class on the class wiki. In the final independent practice activity, students might be asked to differentiate product by interest using a reading from the National Institutes of Arthritis, Musculoskeletal, and Skin Diseases website and the Super Tracker website from the United States Department of Agriculture to determine their own healthy eating habits and physical education habits. They would then write a paragraph describing those habits and post that on the class wiki. I hope the explanation and examples provided in this presentation are useful to you. You can find all of the links that are referred to in this presentation at http colon slash slash delicious dot com slash stacks slash view slash capital H capital O P F H J. Thank you for watching this presentation.